Hello and welcome to HD's weekly talk show, The Interview, and our ongoing series, Reaching Out with HD, where from time to time we feature known and not so known but interesting people, aspirational stories, and fun moments. This week we have with us Monty Rajkhova, the first lady ONGC officer to scale the world's toughest peak. She is also one who opted to work offshore, something women rarely do. So let us meet Monty Rajkhova, the girl in orange, in our new segment, Reaching Out with HT, in our weekly talk show, The Interview. Welcome to the show, Monty Rajkhova, and thank you for being here with us. Thank you so much, ma'am. I'm truly honored to be sitting right beside you and talking about myself. Your life vacillates between onshore and offshore. Tell me about both. What is it like to be offshore? Onshore, like uh, most of our people are onshore, so I would not be emphasizing much on that. But offshore is a totally different and, and enriching world, I should say. Uh, like uh, being in the top of the hills is something different that most people cannot explore. Same is the case with being offshore. Offshore is an arena where we have got the state of the art technology in ONGC especially where I'm working. And uh, the field experience that we get there is totally uh, out of the world so to say. As women are very few in the uh, exploration business and in uh, the oil industry overall, overall in the whole world I should say. But then ONGC has given us this uh, golden opportunity that some of the girls have actually explored. It's like uh, you're on a cruise, but you're working. So what does the job entail? Being in offshore, meaning uh, our plants are there. It's same like uh, onshore plants, but they are like established some 120 kilometers to 70 kilometers out in the sea from the coastline of Mumbai in the Arabian Sea. And uh, where wells have been drilled, uh, after the exploration is made of Mumbai High. So the, uh, from the wells, uh, crude, is being, uh, crude comes in to our platforms where we uh, process it and then further we send the processed fluid to Mumbai for further refining and processing. In layman language, I should say like five buildings which are interconnected with bridges, but that is in the middle of the sea and it uh, caters to a 250 persons POB, as we say, persons on board at a time. So you can imagine how huge the whole structure is. And we have similar plans as that, uh, like around 10 another platforms itself in Mumbai High itself. How tough is it? And what are the challenges? And what are the dangers? Challenges, uh, tough basically ma'am. I feel every job for every person is tough. But then doing that in onshore is pretty different from what we do in offshore. Because in onshore, we have got other facilities like we can, if there is a disaster, then the evacuation is pretty easy in onshore. And we can call for other facilities like uh, local police or local fire brigade for catering the, uh, to like rescue from the disaster. But in offshore, there are safety systems designed for it. For it. In that way, like uh, danger is calculated. And uh, I should say that it is not that unsafe. However, being in the middle of the sea itself is, I feel, unsafe for anybody. And in that scenario, evacuation and uh, how to shut down the plant before moving out, because we are working with oil and gas at very high pressures. So overall, that uh, a whole training and a whole uh, way of setup is already available there. And everybody who's working out there is trained to overcome such situations. But I should say that it's a much more riskier job than as compared to what we do in plants in onshore. Tell me when the first time you went on your offshore duty, were you scared? Were there fears? Or kitna dar laga tha? Ma'am, it's a, like a, in offshore, when, we, when I reached there, like my first uh, visit there was, uh, we were taken by chopper to the plant. The heli deck there itself is like pretty small as compared to helipads on onshore. So that itself was like, I was actually first of all thrilled to be there. But when I started walking down the path, so there are like uh, gratings uh, on, like that are laid down. And uh, it must be around 80, 80, 50 meters above the sea. But then you can see the sea right from there. So when you're giving your feet, then 
you feel that maybe you might fall off. So that was like the first thing that I felt when I was moving around in offshore my, on my first visit. You know, it was you who opted for an offshore posting, which is a bit unusual for women. Yes, that is true. It is uh, an unusual option that I had opted for. But I think right from my childhood, I've never been going into the same track as all others. Uh, so when I was, uh, I actually wanted to join the Indian Air Force when I was in my college. But then uh, due to circumstances, I landed up with ONGC. I was firstly posted in Assam. There I came to know about offshore duties and the stay and the type of work that is done there. So I opted for it as a challenge basically. It was a thrill ma'am. So I wanted to explore it basically. So instead of Indian Air Force, why ONGC and how did ONGC happen? And how does it feel to don the orange uniform? Ma'am, ONGC uh, actually uh, we had a campus recruitment. On the same day, uh, my AFSB, this call letter was also, it has come. On the same date, I was supposed to report in Bangalore. But then my father came to know that uh, a campus recruitment for ONGC has come. And he was like so pleased and he asked me to sit for this interview first. Thereafter, after I got recruited in ONGC, it was like no looking back. I also got placed in uh, TCS actually during my campus recruitment. So they told me that being a girl, why have you opted for ONGC? Exactly. That is my question. Being a girl, why ONGC? It's a mindset actually, like a girl or a boy, the gender biasness or the gender equality that we keep on talking about. So this thing was not, uh, so to say, put into my mind from my childhood. I, I was, uh, I have, I'm born and brought up in the state of Meghale, you, where the society itself is matriarchal. So I even opted for mechanical engineering. I'm basically a mechanical engineer from Jorhat Engineering College. So that option was also questioned very frequently because I got uh, selected for medical as well. So a doctor profession for girls is more preferable. That's what my relatives told me. But I think I made good choices and that's why I'm sitting here now. And I feel every girl should listen to their heart and uh, they should make decisions of their own. They should not be limited by thoughts of others. Like our thought makes us who we are. You know, you have crossed the gender barrier and as you said, gender was never an issue. Yet, let me ask you, ONGC is a male-dominated setup. And given its nature, how tough was it to adapt there? Ma'am, the whole oil and gas business itself is a, a pretty male-dominated arena, I should say. All over the world, I think only 22% beginning earlier, I think only 4% women were there. And uh, that too, mostly in like uh, administrative or managerial roles. roles. Uh, but recently, we have seen like a huge inflow of girls into the technical sector of the oil and gas industry. But when I started, even uh, going to field was a mark of question. Uh, the day we joined, like we were given uh, office postings basically. So then we, even then, like we used to fight. We, uh, we were a batch of eight girls who joined uh, Well Services Assam set. There itself, we made it a point that we do not need to sit on a desk to do our job. We need to go out on the field and know what actually ONGC is doing. I was given an option to start off with, uh, when I opted for offshore basically, I got transferred to Mumbai and there I opted for offshore. My name itself is very confusing <laughs> pretty many a times. So I got a phone call from one of the platforms that is NQO, which uh, where there are no accommodation for girls as of yet. So I got a call from there and uh, the person from the other end asked me, so are you, he thought that I'm a boy. So he asked me that, are you willing to be working in offshore? I said, yes, I'm, I want to work in offshore. He asked me twice that uh, you are Monty Rajkwa, right? And I said, yes, I am. So he was like very pleased and he said, okay, fine. But later on, I got uh, posted to another platform. But however, it was offshore. So it was up to my liking. Any specific problems and issues you faced while working or being offshore because of your gender or because being a woman vis-a-vis -vis facilities? Because as you said, it is a male dominated place. Yes, yes, ma'am. Like uh, facilities in the way uh, previously there was uh, some points in the Mines Act as well which uh, actually did not allow girls to be in the mines area after sundown. 
but that was mostly because like they were underground mines but ongc like oil and gas sector this it's not an underground mine so we started off our job but we were not allowed to do night shifts which is the regular pattern of production engineers in the uh, last uh, we have just started night shift uh, two three months back so overall when we started off there was a a huge like uh, how to put in uh, a sort of a mindset block i should say of my colleagues as well as my superiors they made it a point they thought that uh, girls have come here only to visit us that they will be here for a week or so and then go back to their office postings but my colleagues by girl colleagues and me myself we have spent a quite a lot of time in offshore so with that that whole uh, mindset had changed slowly slowly but it has taken a pretty lot big of big time would you use the word discrimination and would you say initially there was bias and discrimination discrimination i would not put it in that way because very few women actually opted for offshore at that time or they had not come up to that uh, point that someone would like uh, forcibly put them in offshore or so even now like uh, very few of the my women counterparts they opt for offshore but slowly and slowly the things uh, like the whole picture is changing but uh, it it was a little biased i should say how does it feel to don the orange uniform it feels great actually <laughs> so would you change like, it for any other ah uh, no no not right now <laughs> of course i also love my mountaineering suit that uh, like we go for when i when we go for our climbs so we put on that uh, 8000 the suit that it's that also is one of my passion so yes both of them side by side should do it for me i was just going to come to that but you know you did engineering which is again unusual for a woman unusual profession for a woman and then of course mountaineering where you aimed for the everest and about yourself you have said during mountaineering i learned about myself explain this ma'am uh, actually we do not know how much we are capable of i feel that way every person has got more than what he does in everyday work so i feel that uh, the human body and the human mind can achieve much more than what we think even when we were in everest or in kanchenjunga there has been points where like uh, i i was uh, in a way that in kanchenjunga i should tell you there was a point when i asked my sherpa that the dai i need water i'm not being able to do anything without water so when we move above 8000 we are supposed to take supplementary oxygen so my mask and everything was on so he told me ki sister there is no place here it's very steep here you cannot take water here so let's go up with, at one point we'll uh, we'll reach a place where it's more even and there you can take water and that was the biggest lie he told me in, in his life i believe but it made me reach the summit so i believed in him and i said okay dai let's move on and that at that point when i said let's move on that was the point that just took me to the summit because we just kept moving i did not drink a sip of water throughout and we reached the summit <laughs> so i believe it's a like a, it's a, we have got capacities beyond our thoughts so we should explore it how and why the passion for mountains uh, i think it started as a child i believe i was uh, i'm as i've already told you i i have been in meghalaya during my childhood so the hills always call to me i remember incident when i was in my engineering college so i have this uh, like a uh, call for heights i like to go to the top of the place and see the view from there so we have a water tank in our uh, call engineering college jorhat engineering college so once in the i always had a fascination that one day we should go up there so i used to always tell my friends let's go up there and check the view from there but no one would accompany me so one fine morning in the like at around 5 5:30 i went out and i went to the top of that tank and i was sitting there and it was such a mesmerizing view of the whole college and i really enjoyed it but suddenly a chokidar he came and complained to my hod <laughs> that somebody one of one of the students may, maybe her exam wasn't good she went up the tank maybe she's about to suicide so my my uh, like uh, lecturer she, he came the professor he came running and uh, when he he asked the chokidar who's who's the person do you know 
then she said, he said that maybe it's Monty. I think she's the girl. That sir said, no, no, it's fine then. You ask when she comes down, ask her to come and meet me. So I went to him later that, uh, sir, I'm really sorry to put you through all this trouble. Then he told me that, no, I knew that you must have gone for some other thing, for sure that you did not want to suicide. But that was the thing that I really had. And maybe it's the view and the love for the nature that always calls me and that it, the passion just started that way. Monty, you are married. How do you balance marriage, offshore and mountains? Ma'am, uh, I should tell you that I'm very lucky to be married to Mr. Nirmal Kumar. He is a mountaineer. He has uh, submitted uh, the Everest, then Kanchenjunga, then Manaslu, uh, three eight thousanders, and uh, he he is he has been my like uh, partner throughout my whole journey of mountaineering. He's also my ONGC batchmate. He's working in the offshore in ICP platform. So I feel that marriage is a part of life, and uh, if you have the right person uh, beside you. I don't think it's much difficult. Marriage has been actually fun to me. <laughs> you have said that like everyone, I have had problems and have had to step back. Share some incidents. Uh, there have been many times, like uh, at times you know that staying still or stepping back is a better way uh, than moving forward. Such was the case when I went for my Everest expedition. Like uh, when we reached uh, the 8000 in uh, South Coal, we, uh, that night we were supposed to move for the summit push. So we planned to move out at around, uh, like we were supposed to get ready at 8 p.m. and start off by at least 10. Uh, when we were about to start off, a hell of a storm started in South Coal. The winds were so, like it was speeding very high, even the Sherpas would not be able to come out of their tents. So on that day, I feel that it was a very good decision that we did not move up and we came down the next day because all our tents were broken and we did not have any other facilities to stay there. So I believe that every time like life gives you melons and apples, but it's for you what to choose. Because next year I got another opportunity for the Kanchanjanga and uh, I made it to the summit and it was a marvelous journey, ma'am. I should tell you that. Any incidents in life which you would like to forget or wish that they had not happened? Yes, of course. Uh, one of the incidents is uh, when we were climbing up from Camp 3 to Camp 4 in Everest. So there, uh, uh, Nirmal's oxygen was not working actually. So his regulator had got some issue. So he was not being able to pull oxygen from his uh, supplementary oxygen bottle. So he is one of the best. He was one of the best climbers in the whole team, but then, uh, uh, like rest of us, three of us reached the uh, coal, like South Coal, much earlier than Nirmal. So every other second, every after every 10, 20 minutes, I was asking our guides that where is Nirmal. Actually, that is also the time when I realized that I have, uh, like, I have some commitment with him. So that is the incident that I really want to forget. I do not want, I never wanted it to happen and I never want it to happen to anybody else as well. Because mountains are testing and I feel the best should happen to everybody. Also there are incidents uh, in uh, like uh, offshore. So there had been, uh, so to say, not actually biased this, but then uh, there had been occasions when my male counterparts have been chosen against me for some jobs and all. So all such incidents should not happen to anyone and in that way I feel that these things shouldn't be happening to any girl or any other person as such. Finally, you have several firsts to your credit. The first Assamese woman to scale the Kanchanjunga peak, the first lady ONGC officer among men to scale the world's toughest peak. How does it feel and what more do you want to add to your life? It feels marvelous, ma'am. It uh, like it's not. It's a satisfaction actually, uh, being among the boys and going at par. It is a satisfaction, because like uh, I wish that some more girls could have been in my team, but they were they weren't there. But I enjoyed it a lot. What more do you want to add to your life? Other than the, I, I also want to submit other eight thousanders. Everest at as I have just missed it by a whisker, I should say. 
I have a passion for mountaineering. I would love to go to the Everest and summit it someday. Other than that, we are exploring the Kishtwar area recently. So there are very tough and formidable, formidable climbs in that area where only foreign mountaineers and alpinists have explored. So I would like to explore those areas as well. Other than that, uh, I feel like working in ONGC, I would like to explore other fields other than o uh, offshore. Monty Rajkova, you have a long list and best of luck. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being with us and thank you for your time. Thank you so much, ma'am. It was really fun and it was, I had a good time speaking to you.